morning. This might be a good time for me to go ahead and make an announcement this morning. Um, we're starting a new outreach ministry at our church, and I want to let you know about it. We hung the flyer on the back if you want more details, but we're excited about a ministry we're starting at hospice, and Sister Peggy's helping us head this up. But we're going to leave a care basket down there for the people that are there in difficult times that they can get a snack, something healthy to eat, something to get them through. So we've already started this week. She's got it down there. And um, But if you'd like to ever contribute to this, it's going to be an ongoing thing. She's going to keep stocked. There's a list of items back there that we'd be glad to have donations of, individually packaged things. Amen. Yeah. Hey, wonderful ministry opportunity. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Good advertisement, Sister Becky. Praise God. We want to bless them down there. I believe a care package has already been taken down yeah. the hospice and some things are already gobbled up already. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. That's good. That's a good sign. It's needed yeah. then. If it's gobbled up quick, that means it was needed. Yeah. Praise God. We want to be there in every avenue of ministry we can be. Amen. Praise the Lord. God's so good this morning. Are you glad to be in God's house today? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So good to see everybody out with us this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I, I'm excited. We've got ministry going on at hospice with care baskets. you got a VBS coming up in a few weeks here. Praise God. Amen. Come on now. we got nursing home ministry going on. Praise God. we got camp meetings starting this week coming up at our district. Praise God. Amen. we got a lot of stuff going on. Praise the Lord. Amen. God's making it available to you. But will you partake of it or not? Will you partake of it or not? That's the question. Amen. I want to be a partaker. Praise God. Yeah. I want to be a participator. Praise God. It's there for us all. Praise the Lord. Would you stand with me this morning? Amen. Let's open up in prayer. Just so good to see everybody out in God's house. Guys, we live in perilous times as the apostle Paul prophesied about. I don't believe he was a false prophet. I believe he was a tried and true apostle. Yeah, and I believe what he said to Brother Timothy that the last days will be perilous times. I believe we're in those last yes, days. I believe amen. we live in dangerous, perilous times. Amen. So it tells me these times that we gather together to worship is a precious time. Yes. Amen. So it's a precious, perilous day out there. But it's a precious time in here. Amen. Come on, somebody. Help amen. me out this morning. I said it's a precious time in here. Get the fullness of God. Yeah. Get all that God's got yeah. for you this morning. Yeah. Amen. If you're watching via live stream, get every bit of the word of God yeah. today. Yeah. Worship yeah. the Lord with us at, at wherever you're at, no matter what state you're in. Let God be God in your life today. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. Amen. Hallelujah. God's so good to us this morning. Father, we love you. Lord, we praise you. It's good to be in the house of God. We, we honor you and cherish you, God. And we thank you for your presence that is here to help us and to equip us and to encourage us. Thank you for the grace that we're saved by God through the faith we have in the only begotten Son of God. Lord Jesus, we love you. We magnify your name. Let everything be done, God, in honor and magnifying of your name, God. We love you and we thank you, Lord, for this opportune time. God, it's a joy to come to the house of the Lord today. Bless and move upon every life, every heart, God. Build us up on the most holy faith, God. Let us encourage one another, God. Let us be strengthened by the Holy Ghost and the power of God. Oh, we love you and we thank you for what you're going to do in this service today. Bless it, God, with your anointing. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody said amen with me. Come on, remain standing with us. Sister Evie is going to lead us this morning. Brother Kim wasn't able to make it today. Amen. Worship the Lord with her. Amen. Praise God. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord this Amen. morning? Amen. I know I sure am ready to be here. Praise God. Um, page six. I have to be flat, Sister Becky. Page six. Six. Okay.
Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, I don't know the page, Sister Becky. It's unclouded day. Four oh one. side in glory praise God oh that land that precious land we're going to you know you look around in this old world and you say to yourself God there's got to be something better than this there's got to be something better than this 
God's got to be something better than all the sorrow and the heartache we deal with. It got to be something better than the pain, amen, that you're feeling this old body. It got to be something, man. God, I feel like preaching here a little bit, amen. Let's just go ahead, amen. It got to be something better, amen, than the tears that we, we shed, amen. It got to be something better, Sister Peggy, amen, and, and, and hospitals being filled. Come on now, and jail cells being full. It got to be something better than this. Come on now. There is something better than this. His name is Jesus, hallelujah. <laughs> he makes it all better. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. I feel like having church this morning. How about you? I didn't get dressed up for nothing. Come on, somebody. I'm ready to worship the King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Hallelujah, God. Children of God, your face shouldn't be sad this morning like some of y'all's is. I see it. I know it is. Come on. Your face should be smiling. Your face should be full of joy because Jesus has bled and died for you. He has rose on the third day that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So I don't care the heartache about what you're dealing with, all the junk that you brought in here with. Leave it at the door, praise God. This is God's time. Woo, glory to God. You don't have just every opportunity to have breath to praise the Lord. But if you got breath in you right now, that means God's put it in you for a reason. That means God, amen, wants you to praise him and worship him and give glory to his holy name, praise God. I would to God that God's people could shout again. Oh, there you go. You got a little something in you. Well, praise the Lord, amen. He said, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. I don't want a rock out shouting me like Jesus said they would. Praise God. I tell you, what a day we live in, guys. I was talking with Brother Richard Blythe of the Blythe family that's over at our camp meeting. They done revival here uh, in March 2020 before the whole world went chaotic. Amen. And uh, I told him, I said, Brother, it's been a long time since I've seen y'all leaving with them campers going back to Oklahoma. He said, My, how the world's changed since we've seen you last. I said, time is just hurrying up and time's just speedily going by. Yeah. Guys, we need to redeem the time for the days are evil. Yeah. I'm telling you, we got a work to do. We better do it and we better work overtime. Time is running out, folks. Amen. I want to be about the Father's business. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, hallelujah. Amen. We're just getting started around here, but it feels good, don't it? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for all that you give to the church. You're giving you your tithes, your offerings. Amen. Those that give online, God bless you. Amen. It's going to a good work around here. I can tell you that. We want to reach souls for Jesus Christ. Amen. Anybody about that business like, like your church is? You want to see the lost saved? Thank you for your giving. Amen. With that said, give me some ushers this morning. Amen. Brother uh, Michael, can you come up? Brother Bruce, can you help him as well? Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, let me make a few announcements here for just a minute. You got something, Sister Becky? just want to add real quick to that. that um, I think it's called the CHC um, care or Comfort Hope Care, the care basket ministry um, that we're going to do at hospice. But I, I failed to say that we're, we've, we're making some stickers with a scripture on it and things that we're putting on every snack as well. Um, we're just hoping to offer some comfort in Jesus to, to that. So. Amen. Prayers, yes. Well, praise God for a sticker. How about that? Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hey, we, we want to want them to know they can call us for prayer too. Yes. Amen. We, we'll be here for Church. them. Amen. Because yeah. if you're at hospice, it, it's it's because of uh, a, a troubling time. Amen. I appreciate the work hospice does. We I've dealt with them personally, even my family a, a lot. Amen. And I appreciate them. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. We got camp meeting going on this week. Amen. Uh, night services are at 7.30 p.m. It actually starts tonight. It'll be 6 p.m. We'll still have service here. Amen. Uh, so uh, if you want to make uh, Monday through Friday, 7.30, we'll have no service here Wednesday night, so you can come up to camp meeting throughout the week. Day services start 10.30 a.m. Tuesday through Friday. Okay, guys? That's Tuesday through Friday, and the Blythe family will be ministering every one of these services. We're going to wear them out, praise God. We're going to work them, amen. We want to hear from them, praise God. If you've never been to camp meeting, now's a good year to go. Amen. It's a good time to go. Praise the Lord. Uh, family fellowship be the 28th that Wednesday night. That night, we will have classes. will remain normal for the teens uh, uh, and, and kid children classes, but all adults will need your help. We're going to be decorating the church, getting ready for an awesome Holy Ghost filled VBS. Amen. I, I am excited for our children. 
Our kids are pumped. I'm excited for the children in the community as well. It will start the 30th that Friday night, amen, at 6 p.m. So be here for that. You can start registering around 530. If you bring your kids, you can come early at 530 uh, from 6 to 8 8.30, 6 to 8.30, 6 to 8.30, my calendar's wrong up here every time I get it wrong, 6 to 8.30, Friday night, Saturday night, and then Sunday morning, that Sunday morning, we're going to have a big celebration, it's going to be a little different that morning, we're going to have the decoration still up, if you've ever been on it, it's awesome, amen, I love that VBS celebration service Sunday morning, but stick around afterwards, amen, we'll still have Sunday school that morning, 10 a.m., and at 11, we'll do the celebration service, and then we're all going to eat afterwards, we're going to grill hamburgers, all that good stuff, amen, so be here for that, plan on hanging out, there'll be no service that Sunday night, because we'll have to clean everything up, we'll have a big mess to clean up, so if you can stay and help clean up, I appreciate you as well, amen, praise the Lord, all right, let's take up this offering this morning and our tithes amen god bless you for your giving church we got a giving church here amen can you just give yourselves a hand and i'm gonna give you a hand as well amen thank you for your giving god bless you we don't beg a dime around here like silly false prophets do on tv you hear what i just said we don't beg a dime around here but you give as the bible tells you to give and everything be all right how about that amen Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, Thank VBS you. VBS flyers. Yes, VBS flyers on the back for your table. It's your job as a witness of Christ Jesus. It's your duty. It's your solemn duty. How about that? I'll make it fancy for you so you really get into it. It's your solemn calling and duty to hand out them VBS flyers to your neighborhood, your community, children you know. Let them know we, we're here for them. We want them to come. Praise God. So I charge you. See how many flyers you can hand out. Take some with you, hand them out, praise God, and we'll, we'll, have, we'll print some more off for tonight. You can grab them as well. Praise the Lord. All right. Brother Michael, or we call him Chef Mikhail when he's grilling around here. Praise God. Would you ask the blessing of tithes and offerings, please, sir? to be praised. Amen. But they, we need some more monitor for her mic up here on the front side. I don't know what's happening with that. Amen. Check into that for me. Praise the Lord. Let's worship. Amen. My mother-in-law going to come and sing a song this morning. Worship along with her. Praise the Lord. She's even got her own microphone. Look at that. Amen. Hallelujah. Make sure that one's coming through that one as well. Over there. Storms of life toss me to and fro. There is a place I can go. He's the calm through every tempest. He's in anchor 
wandered in the darkness and just a say of the Lord that he is your strong tower? Can, come on. Can you say of the Lord he's your shield and defense? Oh, I can. Hallelujah. I hope you can as well. Amen. Praise the Lord. We'll dismiss our three and under children's uh, nursery church. Sister Sarah's going to be heading back there ages three and under. If we got any toddlers, little babies that want to go to nursery this morning, come on. Y'all give them a hand as they get in these little guys back there. Praise the Lord. Brother Raleigh, sit down. You ain't got to go to nurse church. Hallelujah. <laughs> God's good, ain't he? Praise the Lord. All right, Sister Evie, if you're ready, ages 4 to 10, they want to go to children's church this morning, meet Sister Evie at the back door. Y'all give these little folks a hand. Amen. Ain't they a blessing? <laughs> Praise the Lord for a wonderful, wonderful children's church. Amen. You know what I love most about our children's church over there? Amen. They've got a a half or a five-foot altar just to fit them, just like this one right here. They're being taught how to pray over there. Come on. May they be taught to pray and not faint, praise God. Yes, ma'am. You need two altars? 
All right, I'll talk with your leadership board about that. Okay, praise God. All right, amen. They need two. How you like that, guys? Amen. That's good. We we'll had to put that order in with Brother Rocky. Praise the Lord. I thank God for the gentleman that built our, our pulpit altars, foyer table, that altar over there. He's a blessing, Brother Rocky Sapp at Sanderson Church. He's a blessing, amen. Come on, let's give God praise for the talents and abilities, amen, the gifts of God that he gives. Everybody's gifted differently, you know. Uh, me, uh, uh, if I had to build all this, it, it'd be a show, I can promise you. It, it, it'd be terrible looking. And uh, so I'm glad God gifts other men to do other things, amen, and women too, praise God. Numbers 21 and verse number 4, the book of Numbers 21, verse number 4. Praise God, amen. Thank you, Lord. Numbers 21 and verse number 4. If you get there, let's stand for the reading of God's word this morning. Praise the Lord. Good to see Sister Tony and the Blankenships with us. Praise God. Good to see y'all this morning. Ethan and Paige done slipped in on me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Got a buddy with them as well. Praise the Lord. So good to see everybody in God's house. There's no other place I'd rather be right now than preaching the gospel, worshiping the Lord, praying with somebody. Ain't this life in Christ Jesus wonderful, guys? It's so wonderful. I love it when there's a, a family called the Greens. Amen. Sister Lindsay, Brother Stephen, Sister Cadence. Cadence was a, a VBS hopper, and she wanted to go to every VBS in town. Well, she landed here, last but not least, and come to this VBS two years ago. And I fell in love with them instantly when they walked up on the property and was praying for them. And now they're here, and they're going to be working VBS this year. That's how God works, folks. Amen. God's good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, just shout glory real quick with me. There you go. You couldn't clap because you got your Bibles open. I like that. Amen. I heard pages flopping. Pop, 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 pop. People are trying to clap. Amen. God's good. Amen. Numbers 21 and 4. Did you come to receive the word of God this morning? I hope you did because you're going to get it. Amen. <laughs> you don't get nothing else. Numbers 21 and 4 says this. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spake against God. It's bad when you speak against God there. And against Moses. Bad when you speak against the man of God too. Wherefore have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water. And our soul loatheth this light bread. They talking about that man of God was raining down from heaven. And the Lord sent. Notice the devil didn't send this. The Lord, the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people. Bad to have a snake around you, bad, uh, even worse when he bites you. And much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass. Or you could say there, copper. Amen. Brass there means copper. It was a copper serpent, brazen serpent. And put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. He lived. I want to preach to you this morning a message and just simply titled this. We're going to talk on the topic, the faith walk. The faith walk, amen. Would you please pray with me and pray for me this morning. Pray for Brother Bill. He's on call and he's done been called out. My prayers didn't work this morning, brother. I'm going to pray harder next time, amen. Praise the Lord. He's works at the hospital and they called him out. Y'all pray for him safe travels as well. Father, we love you. Lord, we praise you. God, we, we, we thank you, Lord, that you're here to help us this morning. We thank you for those that are watching via the live stream. May they be blessed by the word of the Lord today. God, I pray and humbly seek, God, and humbly ask 
for your anointing, God, this morning. I need your fresh anointing today, God, to speak words of life, to speak words of wisdom and knowledge and understanding. God, we need your spirit. God, let, let me move with you. Let this congregation move with you. Let us be led by the Holy Ghost and your power. Bless, touch every heart, every life. Heal every backslider this morning. Touch those that need salvation. Maybe there's one lost among us. God, they, they need to find their way home. I pray that you touch them. God, I pray that you'd encourage God and lift up, stir up the gift of God in many people today. We love you and we praise you and we pray that you bless our altar service in a few moments. Bless our children's church as well in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated this morning. In the book of Numbers, we find a, a happening here that transpired in the wilderness with God's people and God's man Moses. Uh, we, we know that God's brought them out of Egypt. They've been rid of their slavery that they were under, the bondage and the chains they were under, building those pyramids for old Pharaoh and, and working like, like a bunch of dogs out there, amen. And the Bible says, amen, that they had a hard taskmaster over them, the Egyptians, uh, you know, but God heard the cry, thank God, and God uh, delivered them with the strong arm of the Lord. Moses didn't deliver them, God did. Moses used a man to help, help deliver them, praise God, and used him and worked through him as he stretched that rod forth over that Red Sea and they walked over on dry ground. Well, here they've been in the wilderness for some time, amen, and we find that there was a struggle going on. Now, this is a struggle, amen, that most children of God face even today. This parallels our walk with God in so many ways, shapes, or facets, amen, and forms. Uh, don't have time to get in a lot of the shadows and types, but you'll get what we're saying here in a few moments. These people were called out of Egyptian bondage and rid of, of, of chains that held them down. Praise God. I apologize it's hot in here, guys. I don't know why it's so hot. Y'all breathing heavy. I don't know what's wrong with y'all. Praise God. Amen. It's hot. We in Florida. Praise the Lord. Y'all just keep fanning. Amen. I'm hot too. I'm sweating already. Hallelujah. It means it's going to get good in a little bit, Brother Ron. Amen. But we find, amen, that it's like that with us. The devil's a hard taskmaster to you. That old Pharaoh represents Satan in your life. Keeps you chained down and shackled down and in bondage. And thank God, but God, amen, uh, hears your cry. And God brings you out of Egypt, praise God. Rids you of the chains that bind you down. You walk through baptized in that Red Sea, hallelujah, in the body of Christ. Then, amen, you, you're supposed to inherit the promises of God. You're supposed to go into Canaan land and inherit a land that flows with milk and honey. I'm going to tell you, amen, that's how your life is with salvation. I don't believe, amen, Canaan land represents heaven in no way, shape, or form because Canaan land weren't perfect and there was a bunch of heathens in Canaan land that had to kick out. Come on, somebody. In heaven, only the righteous are there. In heaven, only the blood-bought child and saint of God's there. That's bought by the blood of the Lamb of God. But I believe that Canaan land represents, amen, the promises of God. I believe it represents, amen, how you can walk humbly with God and God can bless you and that word of God can be alive and well inside of a human being. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we find here they're walking around this wilderness but they're to walk in faith. It was by faith they were to take the Passover lamb and offer up that lamb without spot or blemish. That lamb represents Jesus Christ. When God was going to smite the firstborn of the land of Egypt, God said, when I see the blood applied upon your doorpost and your lintel, amen, from that lamb and that family that's in there, he said that death angel will pass over you, therefore it's called the feast of Passover. Jesus is our Passover lamb as the lamb of God slain before the foundation of this world. Praise God. It was by faith, Brother Jacob Thornton, amen, and by faith, Brother Tyler Floyd, that they'd take that lamb and they'd slay that lamb and apply that blood to the doorpost and lentils with that branch of hyssop. It was a faith thing because if they didn't do it, the firstborn in that house would die just like an Egyptian firstborn would die as well. Amen. I'm going to tell you, folks, it was a faith thing from the start. If you're going to serve God, you must walk by faith and not by sight. We are just justified by our faith. We're not justified by our works. I do believe, as Brother James so eloquently put it in the Holy Ghost in the book of James, uh, amen, he said, uh, you say that you're saved, you say you believe in God. He said, well, that's fine. The devil believes it also and trembles, amen. But he said, I 
show you my faith by my works. I do believe if you say you got a faith, there's going to be a work that comes out of you. That means your faith is real. Amen. It's not dead. Praise God being alone. That's just Bible, good sound doctrine for you this morning if you never heard it. We live in a generation that claims to know God but don't walk with God. Come on, somebody. Claims to know this book. Claims to preach this gospel. Amen. But they don't know how to work, walk with God and they don't perform the works of God. Amen. I'm telling you, we live in a twisted day, folks. Be careful. Amen. My goodness. But this faith walk, these folks here were to walk by faith, not by sight. And folks, when we quit walking by faith, when we quit walking in the Spirit of God, as the Bible tells us in Galatians, to walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. When we walk by faith, that means we're walking in the Spirit of God. And when we quit walking by faith, we quit walking by the Spirit, things start to take place and we're going to touch on them this morning is what we're going to talk about. We see a prime example of this with the children of Israel when they've been brought out of Egypt praise God. When you've been brought out as well, you're going to face these temptations as well. You're going to battle this as well. They were human. You're human. You're going to battle it too. But it's put in here for our ammunition. It's put in here, amen, to encourage us in the Lord that you can draw strength and you can learn from other people's mistakes. Come on somebody. This walk with God is a faith walk or you will die in this wilderness called the earth right now that you dwell in. You're Right now you're in the wilderness. Right now, come on now, I ain't in heaven yet. I hadn't walked streets of gold. I hadn't seen walls of jasper. I hadn't sat down at the feet of Jesus. I hadn't ate at the marriage supper of the Lamb. My, my name is written in the Lamb's book of life, praise God. And when the roll's caught up yonder, I will be there. Somebody say amen. Praise the Lord. But this is a faith walk. I hadn't arrived yet. I hadn't been married to Christ yet. I'm espoused to him and engaged to him right now. But I must walk by faith. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen. You'd agree with that. That's in the book of Hebrews. So we must be a people of faith. Amen. Today, amen. Now we're just like they were walking in this wilderness. They, they said some things here and God sent some fiery serpents upon them. Now these serpents, amen, had that color of a brownish tint or a goldish tint like a copper or a bronze look to them. That's why Moses was to make a, a brazen serpent. Amen. And it had that look to it as well. Uh, and God let them know that when you see that, when they look upon that serpent on that pole, they had faith enough to trust what the word of God said. Did you see how this is a faith thing as well? That they meant they would be healed and they wouldn't die. Amen. There's snakes that look dead like this in Australia. I've seen them on the nature channel. Praise God. I, I like watching the animals. That's just one thing. I about the only thing I can watch anymore. Come on now. Other than that, the rest is ungodly garbage. You better watch yourself. Amen. We sitting there in the restaurant. Though they, it's bad enough. They put 20 of them in a restaurant you can't get away from the garbage my boys asked me said daddy why two men holding hands and got a family that's the junk we live with guys come on now you can call me hateful all you want we'll call God hateful too come on somebody I hate to have to explain that mess to my son but I've got to so he knows the difference between right and wrong <laughs> Help us, Holy Ghost, in this ungodly day we live in. God help us. Jesus, my heart's broken, amen. Uh, the junk we deal with in this land, it ain't just that. Hey, we heard a gunshot last night. Micah's in there crying, Daddy, somebody's shooting at us. I live in Lake City, pretty peaceful place. But there's gunshots going on, 11.30 at night, waking my, my children up. I said, I went out there, I'm ready to shoot something too. Come on, somebody. I'm ready. I got the Holy Ghost and I got a nine millimeter too. Come on, somebody. I'm ready. I got a wife and kids. Amen. Ain't nobody storming in my camp without me putting up a fight. Come on, somebody. I ain't putting up with no devil's mess in my neighborhood. Come on now. I'm neighborhood watch because the Holy Ghost got to watch on this property. Hallelujah. I'm out there. I said, boy, I said, maybe it was a firecracker. Maybe somebody had something left over, didn't want to waste the money. They wasted on the 4th of July. They just had to pop that thing. Amen. Somebody might have had a fiery serpent in the yard, had to kill them off. Amen. I don't know what it is, but let's go to sleep. I said, because God's got this house protected, son. Holy Ghost is here. We're going to be all right. <laughs> Woo, glory. The woes of not walking by faith. Should have titled it that. Sounds a little better, don't it? You do what you want to with it. The woes of not walking by faith. When you don't walk by faith, there's some key things going to happen here. There's about 40 million other ones, but we ain't got time but for five of them. How about this? Quick hitters, walk with me here. First thing that'll happen, you're going to start murmuring and complaining. You ain't 
never seen no Christian murmur and complain, have you? I ain't never grumbled either. Yeah, right. We all know how to do this because before you were saved, all you ever did was complain. Woo! It's hard to get that evil and that wickedness out of you. So this side of salvation, old flesh gets up every morning just like the Spirit does. Amen. You find yourself talking bad about somebody. And you got to repent. Come on, somebody. Amen. Murmuring and complaining. It'll be coming out of your mouth. Praise God. Somebody will complain about something for 20 minutes, and they say, well, I don't mean to complain. Yeah, you did. You done it for 20 minutes. I had to put up with it. Glory to God. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> Verse number four. Listen at them. Listen at this bunch. Wouldn't you love to pastor this church? Hallelujah. They journeyed from that mount by the way of the Red Sea and passed the land of Edom. See, they, 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 they had to go out the way. They went the long way. Keep that in mind. We'll get to that. That's another point. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. When you are having to be reproved for your unbelief by God Almighty, discouragement will set in because you're having to learn things the hard way. I know ain't nobody in here ever had to learn nothing the hard way. I try to learn the easy way, but they sometimes, Brother Lance learns the hard way. I've stuck this big size ten and a half in my mouth a few times. I've learned to shut up sometimes. Come on, somebody. I've learned to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> I can save a whole heap of trouble for old pastor if I just keep my mouth shut. And they sometimes God makes me open it anyhow, and you don't like that either. Come on, somebody. And I don't like it either. Hallelujah. <laughs> but we got to do it sometimes. But they were being reproved for their unbelief. You got to understand, these folks uh, had to wander in the wilderness of unbelief. We'll just call it a wilderness of unbelief. Don't go there, guys. It's a terrible wilderness, bad desert to walk in. When faith would have brought them into the land that they've been promised. See, your faith brings you into the promises and the word of God. Praise God. It brings you into that. Remember the spies report. Twelve men sent in, 40 days, 40 nights. They scoped out that land. Two men are excited. Two men are ready to have camp meeting. Hallelujah. They're ready for revival. They're ready for the promises and the healings and the miracles of God. Hallelujah. They know it's going to be difficult, but they're looking with an eye of faith. Praise God in Joshua and Caleb. Amen. Praise God. I said it right, Becky. Hallelujah. I said Caleb. It is Caleb. Eh? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hey, but they're the only two that's walking by faith and not by sight. But there's 10 other naysayers. There's 10 other people that bring up an evil report. Poor. And they said, dear God, we're as grasshoppers in their sight. We're little guys, and we're as grasshoppers in our own sight, meaning we can't do anything. I know it's what God said it was. We got a cluster of grapes we can't even tote back to the camp. We got pomegranates. We got all these vegetables and fruits that God said would be there. There's some milk. There's some honey there. Well, dear God, if you can see what God said to be there, I believe you could charge the hill. I believe you could be a Joshua and Caleb and say the Lord. Lord will fight for us, but they didn't do it, folks. They brought up an evil report, the Word of God says. It was an evil report. You know why it was called, not just a report. See, we'll call it the spies report. Something. No, the Bible says it was an evil report. It's an evil report when God says he'll do one thing and you say he's going to do another. That makes it evil. Come on now. Because what God says is true and it's factual. Amen. And God will perform what he sets out to accomplish. Amen. This, this, this was when the flesh took over and unbelief kept them walking in circles until a faith generation would go into that land. They had to walk 38 years longer than they needed to. It would total 40 years. And God said anybody that's 20 years old and upward, their carcass is going to die in that wilderness. You know what God was doing through Joshua and Caleb? Amen. And he let them go in because they had a good report. They were the only ones that got to go in out of that older generation because they walked by faith. I'm going to tell you, child of God, if you're going to make it into glory, you better have what Joshua and Caleb had. Amen. If you're going to walk into the promises of God and this life and the life to come, praise God. Those that were 20 years old and upward, amen. God said, your carcass will fall in the wilderness. God said that. That don't sound like God, the God I know. Well, maybe you need to read the Bible some more. Because the Bible also says in the book of Psalms, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. But God said about the unbelieving crowd, your carcass is going to die and rot in the wilderness because they wouldn't believe God. 
the same people God brought them out of the garbage. God brought them out of chains and shackles. They fought the man of God. They fought and strove against the Holy Ghost. They fought against what God was doing, amen, because they would not walk by faith. And child of God, if you don't walk by faith, you're the same as them. Come on now. I don't want to be like them, amen. I want to be that faith generation at 20 years old and downward, amen. And what they had to watch. Come on now. They had to watch. Mom and daddy kicked the bucket in the wilderness. They had to watch grandpa and auntie and uncle die in that wilderness because they wouldn't believe God. God was letting that generation know if you're going to serve me, it can be wonderful. you got to walk by faith. But if you don't serve me, amen, and you, you strive against me and you talk against me, it's going to be hard in the wilderness and you're going to end up dying in that wilderness. They were murmuring and they were complaining, amen. They, 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 they chode with Moses so much, amen. Said, would to God we was back in Egypt. Would to God. God, amen, that we, you know, uh, had the garlics and the vegetables there and all this other stuff, amen. Uh, uh, this ain't no good for us, praise God. That unbelief in that wilderness cost them their lives. So don't complain to me after church. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. No, for real, don't complain to me after church. <laughs> Glory to God, I ain't joking. No. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second thing, let's move on because y'all don't like that one. I can already tell Think about it before you murmur and complain next time. I'm preaching to me too. Come on, I'm with you. I can, I can complain with the best of them. I don't like how that went. Well, who made me God anyhow? Come on. Watch how you murmur and complain. When you ain't walking in the Spirit, you will murmur and complain. When you're walking in the Spirit, you don't care what the devil says to you. You don't care how big a problem somebody got with you. you know, I love you. God bless you, man. God's good today. No devil just shuts up. Come on. Amen. Good always outweighs evil, folks. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, a soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up strife. So that means this. If Brother Tyler's got a bone to pick with me, I'm using the illustration, me and Tyler are best buds, amen. If he's got a problem with me and he's mad and I mean he's done let the devil jump on him and he ain't walking by faith or walking in the spirit, he ain't prayed in a week or two, ain't been reading his Bible, amen. This will happen when those things don't happen, folks. Come on now. And, he, and, and he's, got, he's got something. Maybe he's even in the right, but he's got the bad attitude about it or something, whatever the case may be. And he comes to me. And, he, and he's, man, he, he's just full of wrath, full of hatred, full of anger, hostility. Well, if I match him with that and say, I don't like you either. Grievous words stir up strife. And all of a sudden, amen, I'm getting beat to death by a man with a red beard. And I'm trying to kick him just to hurt his kneecap. But it'll cause a fight. Grievous words stir up a fight. But a soft answer turns away wrath. You know how many people's come to me, Pastor, I just, blah, 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 blah. I mean, they were full of complaint. Murmuring. I said, my, man, it's... Uh, I love that dress you're wearing. Man, that is a nice tie, Brother Hal. <laughs> oh, really? You like this? Oh, yeah, yeah, I got this one down there at the store down there at Ross. They had it on sale. And everything's cool. Practice, practice Proverbs. It'll help you. Amen. That's why you need to read a proverb a day to keep the devil away. Come on, somebody. Amen. It will. Amen. Some folks hard to calm down, but hey, it'll keep them getting a black eye. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Woo, glory. Amen. Second point, woes of what not walking by faith. This is what they dealt with. You will have a lack of respect for the things of God and the people of God. I got three amens. That's all right. They said, they said this in Numbers 14 and 4. Or, or yeah, 14 and 4 earlier on. They said one to another, let us make a captain over us and, and let us return into Egypt. They wanted a captain over them. In verse 4 of our text, amen, they were discouraged of the way and now they, they, they wanted multiple times a captain. They, they can't stand what Moses is saying. That law of God's too rough, amen, and the ways of God and the statutes of God and all these commandments and we, we need a captain over us. Let us make a captain. That's when you don't respect the elders and those that are in authority over you. And realize, and you don't never realize that they care about your soul and they're watching over you. Moses loved the people of God. At one point in time, God told Moses, step aside and I'll kill every one of them. You ain't ever read that, have you? But it's in there. Go back and look it up when you get home. Be good for your Bible study. He said, step aside, young man. Let me kill every one of them. 
because I can't stand their unbelief. I'm tired of the murmuring, I'm tired of the complaining, and I'm tired of their unbelief. Moses said, God forbid it that all the other nations will hear how you brought your people out and just killed them off. He interceded for them. He stood in the gap, folks. And intercessory prayer means a lot, folks, or they'd have died. God said, I'll make of you a great nation. Moses, all I need is you. I'll take you. I'll multiply you. I can work with you. But Moses said, God, let it be forbid. Don't, don't do that, God. Come on now. Moses turned the wrath of God. Amen. You better thank God for people that care about you. You better thank God for people who love you enough to give you the truth no matter how you like it and no matter how you hate the guts. You better praise God for people like that in your life. If somebody's always just giving you what they want you to hear and you ain't never done nothing wrong and you're perfect and you're just peaches and cream, amen, odds are they lying to you. Because you ain't perfect. Sometimes you can be ungodly. But if they let you know in a polite manner and they're praying for you and say, I'm praying for you, well, why are you praying for me? I thought I was peaches and cream. I thought everything was good. I thought I'm all good. I'm praying for you. Well, I'm concerned about this. Don't get mad with them. You better love them to death because they care about you. There's always, listen to here, let's do a little preaching here. Y'all ready? Sunday school lesson over. This is always, there's always a captain waiting for you. There's always a captain. Let us make a captain over us that we may return into Egypt. You know what captain they wanted? They wanted Satan. They wanted the devil. You better believe there is a captain, the devil. He doesn't mind escorting you back to the filth God brought you out of. That devil don't mind chaining and shackling you back down. Somebody help me preach here. That devil don't mind you going back to the hog slop. He don't mind taking you back to the filth God washed you of. He don't mind it at all. Matter of fact, he rages against you and wars against you every day of your life because he wants to get you back. If you've been brought out, amen, of bondage and you've been brought out of Egypt, that devil sure like to have you back. He don't fight those he's already got. He fights the children of God because he can't stand them and he wants to drag them back to the mess God brought them out of. Would to God we was back in Egypt. This all right? This helping y'all? Y'all cool? All right. Some of y'all looking at me funny. Good for you. But Jesus can be your captain as well. My God, I'll shout here whether you do or not. I said Jesus wants to be your captain as well. He's the author and finisher of your faith. And he's the captain of your salvation, the Bible calls him. Ha, I've got a captain of this old ship of Zion. Amen, that I set sail on a long time ago. That captain is going to bring me into Canaan land. That captain is going to see me into a land that flows with milk and honey. That captain is going to lead me and guide me with his spirit. Hallelujah. My God, thank God for the captain of your salvation this morning. Give Jesus a big hand clap of praise in this house. The woes of not walking by faith. You'll start murmuring, complaining. You'll have a lack of respect for the things of God and the people of God. Come on. Amen. I remember one time we building a building out here. This one right here. God stirred me in the contractor up, I can tell you that. We come out our dumpster slam full of garbage. That weren't no community dumpster, by the way. It was a construction dumpster. It wasn't for the community to come dump their garbage in. But a man took the liberty, and we saw him on our lovely cameras we had installed. It's a shame you got to do that nowadays, but that's why you got to do it. He comes up with a big old trailer full of junk, been remodeling a house or something, and commits to dumping every bit of his garbage and filled that half full dumpster up that we needed to finish. No, it was remodeling that, that building, the educational building. We still needed, we had junk to go in there and remodel and stuff and trim and trash and stuff like that. That dumpster's $350, folks. Come on now. But he just took his liberty to just commence to dumping, amen? Dump it, slam full, running over. He wanted the dumpster running over. I weren't going to say a thing about it. But I believe God showed us who it was, and we knew where to find him. That man had to come back and get it right. I said, either you can take that garbage out of there and get it back to the, the level we had it at or you can pay me X amount of money because that's God's dumpster. That's God's people's dumpster. I don't care what excuse you offer me. I didn't sugar it down one bit. Come on now. It was wrong. It was wrong. We live in a day come on now where people don't respect anything. You hear what this pastor's saying? Child of God don't let that be said of you.
Come on now. Dear God, don't litter on somebody's property. Come on now. Don't do something that ain't right. Praise God. You're a child of the king. Let's act like it. Come on, somebody. Hey, when you ain't walking by faith and you're walking by sight, you won't care about your neighbor's property. You won't care at all. We live in that day. Be different. Be different. Amen. Third thing, the woes of not walking by faith, you'll desire a change. And it ain't a good change. Would to God we was back with the devil in Egypt and by the flesh pots. The flesh pots. The flesh pots where they cook the cows. Where you got a little yard bird in you. Come on now. Where you had something besides this manna that our soul loatheth. Would to God we was back. Our soul loathes. Some, somebody say loathes. You don't even know what it means, do you? I didn't either. I had to look it up. I'm with you. Praise God. It means you abhor it. You detest it. You can't stand it no more. Some people used to pray in this altar on a Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and now they can't stand it no more. You know why? Because I ain't seen them down here in about a month of Sundays. That means you don't like doing it no more. God's got manna for you. Will you despise it and say, would to God I... I would to God, I, I, I just I was back in Egypt by the flesh pots, the garlics, the leeks. I had all the, the seasoning I could prep my food with, this and that. This is when you don't realize how the Lord miraculously provided for you. Every day he provided manna and running water out of a rock, folks. This is miraculous. And how good that they had it and how good you have it this side of salvation because you're not in bondage and in chains anymore. Don't ever forget where God brought you from. Psalm 68, 6 says, God sets the solitary in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. They were rebellious, and they dwelt in a dead, dry land. Our soul loathes this manna. We're sick of it. Dear God, we made every cracker you can make. We've made a Ritz cracker. We've made a Lance cracker. Come on, somebody. Hey, I wish I had stock in that company. Amen. They, they made a saltine cracker. Come on now. They made every cracker you can make with that coriander. Look like coriander seed. It's just that fluffy manna. They can mash it, beat it down, prepare it. Amen. Had to go out and get it every day. Dear God. Amen. That's when you start walking by sight and walking in the flesh. It's a dear God. That pastor just tells me i got to read the word of God every day. I need to pray and not faint. I'm just tired of hearing about all that. Well, my friend, you're further gone than what we thought. Come on, somebody. Amen. It'll happen, praise God. When you're not walking by faith, your desires will change. Instead of coming to God's house, you'll do other things. Oh, God, help me. Don't let me go here, Holy Ghost. God, I got to go. Yeah, I got to go here. Listen to me. Listen to me good. I'm not picking on nobody in this house of God. Family time is important time. I love my family. I hang out with them every day. But don't play, take place of God time. Is your family your God or is God your God? There's a balance on that, folks. Don't take me wrong. Don't think I'm hateful on that. There's a balance. There's God time and there's family time. There's God time and there's career time. There's God time and there's hobby time. There's God time and there's fishing time. There's God time and there's camping time. There's God do you get where I'm going with this? Give God the glory that's due unto him when it's deserved. He deserves the honor and the glory in these things. God wants you to have a good time. God wants you to have fun. God loves those. God loves you having recreational time. It's good for you. Good for you. Amen. Good to relax. Good to rest. Amen. Praise God. But there's times, amen, that God's established that you need to be stirred up and increased in your faith. Amen. If not, you're going to bust hell wide open, folks. That's just what's going to happen to you. Get your priorities straight now. It's what God's saying there. Amen? Desires change. I could take you right now. I could take you to preachers' houses that ain't preaching no more. Come on. I know their address. I'll take you right there right now. It breaks my heart, Brother Eric. It hurts my, it tears me up inside. What are they doing? They're doing this, doing that. Selling this, buying that, career. Didn't God call to pre call you to or not? If God said to do something, you're going to answer to God for it one day. 
That's without repentance, folks, the gifts and the callings of God. Amen. Oh, God, help us in this last day we live in. We don't take nothing serious no more. Amen. When it said our soul loathes this, this manna, that means to sever oneself from. They're ready to just cut theirself off from it. Have you ever cut yourself off from the Word of God? You ever cut yourself off from your prayer room? I'm preaching good because you're getting real quiet. Oh, y'all learned to amen me one day. <laughs> Fourth thing, you'll become delusional. Ever seen delusional Christians? I have. You become delusional. When you don't walk by faith and you walk by sight, you're not walking in the spirit, you're walking in the flesh, you're carnal, you get delusional. Listen to what they said. Let me show you how delusional they were. It's right here in your text. Verse number 5 of Numbers 21. The people spake against God, against Moses. That was one of our last points. Where, why did you bring us out to Egypt to die in the wilderness? Listen to what the statement they made. For there is no bread, neither is there any water out here, and our soul loathes this light bread. So there weren't manna every day that was bread. Yeah, there was. So there weren't water gushing out of a rock when Moses hit it with the rod. They lied. You know what they do? They're delusional. That's the silliest statement you'll ever hear in your life. There's no bread out here. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. There's no water out here. Yes, there is. Amen. Yes, there was. What are you talking about, man? I, I thought about how delusional do a lot of folks get when they give place to the flesh and the devil and false statements will be made like this. You just fill in the blank here. I've heard false statements like this. That church don't even like me no more. You delusional, honey. This church will do anything in the world for you. Come on now, you get delusional. They don't like me down there. Nobody even shook my hand. We show up 20 minutes late, leave 20 minutes early. Nobody even got to see your face. I get sick of that garbage because you're not walking by faith. My God, God's talking to somebody in this house this morning. Let God have his way in you. They don't like me anymore. I don't belong down there and I don't fit in. If you don't fit in the body of Christ, where are you going to fit in at? The world at the juke joint up the road? The strip club? The gambling house? Where will you fit in at? Oh, God, we got a lot of flesh to deal with, don't we? This is the key one. They hurt me. I got hurt. I got hurt. I got hurt. You're delusional. You got to see what the enemy's trying to do to you. You got to see that, that you don't wrestle with flesh and blood. That means I'm not your enemy, Brother Kane. My flesh and my body, my blood, I'm not, I'm not the one doing it to you. Brother Ron, you're not the one doing it to me. There's a devil involved here, folks. And if you don't walk by faith enough to see that, amen, you're going to die in this wilderness. You're going to perish in this world. You know how many people sitting at the house this morning should be in this house of God alone? I know about 200 should be here this morning. You know how many thousands of people sitting in Columbia County, Swanee County, sitting at home saying ain't nothing but a bunch of hypocrites down there, and they hurt my feelings. They dying in the wilderness when God's got a work for them to do. When God wants to bring them into a land flowing with milk and honey. You ain't got time to get hurt. Come on, somebody. I want to tell somebody, maybe you're dealing with this this morning. Let's just go ahead and get, get you delivered right now. You want to get delivered? I do. Why don't you just quit that job you go to every day for 10 hours a day, 8 hours a day? Amen. And fall out with those heathens that you work with because they hurt your feelings every day down there, but you show up every day faithfully. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Why don't you fall out with that job then? Oh, God, I ain't got nothing else to say on that one. It takes faith to pray through, folks. It takes faith to pray through. It takes faith to get it right with your brother if you got a discrepancy. It takes come on. It takes pride, amen, to fall out with somebody. Y'all want another proverb? Here you go. You ain't read them in a while, so I'm gonna give them to you. Only by pride comes contention. That means if me and Tyler get into that fight and he does black my eye and break my neck, and I drop kick him in the knee and try to give him a knee replacement. That means if that happens, amen, one of, both, one of us or both of us wouldn't let pride get out the way. I can resolve any issue with my brother in Christ. That issue can be resolved. Only by pride comes contention and fighting. 
Nations have fought against nations because of pride. Families won't talk to other family members because of their rotten pride. My God, folks. I feel like I'm preaching a foreign doctrine, but it feels good. Mm. Well, glory. Amen. So how delusional have you been here lately? Don't get delusional on Christ. He didn't get delusional on you. Don't get that way with him. Come on, pray it through. Amen. Last but not least, the woes of not walking by faith. You will ultimately forget that the Lord can provide your every need. You will forget that the Lord will provide. Psalm 78, if you got time later on, read the whole chapter. It's all about what I'm preaching here. We just ain't got time to read it. Amen. You'll be getting mad at me, murmuring, complaining. You ain't at lunch yet. Hallelujah. Psalm 78, 19. Let me read a little bit of it, though. Yea, they, they spake against God. That's what we read in our text. It's talking about that. The psalmist is relaying this. They said, they, they asked a question. Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Behold, he smote the rock that the waters gushed out, and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? Yea, he did. He provided millions, uh, thousands of quail. Therefore the Lord heard this and was angry or wroth. So a fire was kindled against Jacob, talking about Israel to the Hebrew people, and anger also came up against Israel because they believed not in God, there's that unbelief, and trusted not in his salvation. Though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven and had rained down manna upon them to eat and had given them the, of the corn of heaven, man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. When you don't walk by faith, you forget how God can provide for you. He can furnish a table in the wilderness. He just said he did right there. He can furnish a table in your lowest of valleys. He can furnish a table when you're on the peak of a mountaintop. My God, I've read in Psalms 23, 5, that great chapter of the book of Psalms where he said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He said that he prepares a table in the presence of mine enemies. I'm telling you, God can furnish a table for you. God can provide for you. But you've got to walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Jesus asked a question in Luke 18 and 8 after he ended that parable of the importunate widow and talked about your prayer life, teaching you how to pray and not faint. He said in the first verse, I would that men would pray and not faint. Verse number 8 ends like this of that parable. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, talking about his return, shall he find faith on the earth? Question mark. Is God going to find faith in you? Is God going to find faith if he comes to welcome church today? Jesus asked a question. If he'd find faith on earth when he returns. By that question, after a lesson on prayer, it implies that it's going to be very hard to find faith when he returns. It has the implication and it implies that when you read that, he's asking the question. If he wasn't concerned about it, he wouldn't ask the question. It implies it's going to be few and far between that he finds faith in. Not every church member is going to go to heaven, folks, what I'm saying. Not everybody that graces the house of God on a Sunday every now and then is going to get to heaven. Either you're going to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over the few things. I'll make you ruler over many. Or you're going to hear him say, depart from me, you that work lawlessness and iniquity and perversion. I've never known you. Come on, somebody. That's just the word of God. He'll separate the sheep from the goats. Some will be on the right hand. Some will be on the left hand. That's the sight of God we don't want to hear about today, but it is the judgment of God, and it's in the book, and you better listen to it this morning. Hallelujah. Will he find faith on the earth? Amen. Now, dear God, don't forget that the Lord can provide for your every need. Amen. Pray for the small things. Pray for the big things. Pray and seek the counsel of God. Amen. Just pray and not faint in this last day. Notice, I want you to notice how the Lord was trying to teach them and instruct them to walk by faith, even with that brazen serpent that Moses lifted up. This is what he was trying to do here. Numbers 21.9 is what we read earlier. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a certain serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. This is a faith walk still today, folks. Come on, somebody. This is a faith walk. See, it was by faith they were to look at that serpent lifted up. And they believed they'd be healed because God said they would be. 
Well, in John 3, 14, Jesus talks about it. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man, talking about Jesus, be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. If you're going to be delivered from the bite of the serpent, that devil that has been plaguing mankind since the fall of the garden with Adam and Eve, then you must look unto the Son of God, the perfect lamb without spot or blemish, the King of kings and Lord of lords that was lifted up in this so-called wilderness of an earth over 2,000 years ago. You must look to him in faith and trust that he is able. Somebody give him praise in this house. Go ahead and stand with me. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. I'm ask a couple of questions and we're going to pray together. How about that? That'll be all right. In conclusion... Questions got to be asked. Are you going to learn the easy way or is it going to be a hard way for you this morning? I tell my little four-year-old that all the time. Kason, son, will it be the easy way today or is it going to be the hard way? And probably nine and a half times out of ten, it's the hard way. He wears me out. If I love him enough, I'll keep being in the hard way and teaching him in the hard way. Because I know he's got great potential. And I know God's got to work for him. When I know he can move mountains if he'll just get an ounce of faith. But he'll never get it if he can't respect me teaching him the hard way. If I'm soft with him and I'm light with him and I say, oh, well, just did you. Like most folk raise kids nowadays, he'll be in jail. I believe that with my heart. He believe in jail. He'd be out here on a motorcycle, amen, running the roads, ripping and rearing, doing drugs, selling drugs. I know what the potential the devil has for him. Some of you have that potential as well. God's got to teach you the hard way. You ought to thank him for it. But guys, you don't have to be taught the hard way. Amen. It don't have to be like that. See your faults. See your failures. See how you're just running in circles in a wilderness and it causes death. It's the same problem you probably dealt with for 10 or 5 years. Amen. You'll never go no further till you get rid of it. Let God get it out of you today. You're going to learn the easy way or the hard way. Listen to this. Are you going to keep being stubborn and wandering in that wilderness and never enjoy the life that you could have and miss out on heaven? Hmm. Why don't you let faith arise in you today? Have that ounce of faith to come to an old-fashioned altar of repentance or prayer and let God deliver, let God set free, let God help you today. I believe God wants to help you. Start trusting in the Lord and His Word today. Hey, some folks already making a faith walk. Ain't it beautiful? Oh, it's beautiful. God, <laughs> won't you walk with them? Why don't you walk with this church? Why don't you walk with Follow us as we follow Christ. Follow us as we walk in faith. We just want to please Him that just caught us out of darkness in the marvelous light. You got the issues you need to get resolved this morning. There's an altar for you. There's a place of prayer. Bring it to the Lord. Let God help you. God will provide for you. Don't you keep looking back at Egypt, dear God. You let God bring you out of that mess. God will provide. You ain't got time to keep murmuring and complaining. You got mission work to do, child of God. Quit getting distracted by the devil. Quit getting distracted by worldliness. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. You got things to do for the Lord, your God. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, let's pray, folks. How, oh, Father, I've said everything you wanted me to say. God, please let me walk by faith and not by sight. Let me trust in you, God. God, that you'll set up and establish things at this church and not me and not our, even our other leadership, but you'll lead us and guide us. God, let us walk with faith. Let us walk in the Spirit that we may please you. Oh, God, you've been a good, good Father to us. Bless our people this morning in this altar. Build them up on the most holy faith. Stir up the gifts that lie within them. Let them be, be of, a, of a diligent mindset. Let us not deal with a slack hand, oh God, in the matters and the business of God. Help us, Holy Ghost. Come on, let's pray, folks. Seek the Lord.
trust in him this morning. Come on. That's just half of it. I know you trust in him, but can he trust you? Can he trust you is the biggest question of all.